Are we live? I'm live. Good evening, Tua. Welcome to Mythical Ireland, episode 210, continuation of In Search of the Awesome Mystery. Well, I'm so happy to be here. My friend Anthony has given me the responsibility, so I have a slot here for the next three hours, so you have to bear with me. I have the Mythical Ireland news. First news headline on Gobbit takes the top spot at the Showcase 23. How about this, my friends? Look at this. More discussed a little, little bit later on. We'll have a look at the comments. First online is who have we got here now? Wait, no, I'm not used to this now. Samantha Healy. A very good evening to Samantha. Lovely to see that you're the first here with the first comment. Good evening, Anthony, and to all the two. Yes, great to have you on board. And we have Michael Pike. For those of us that will remember back a number of years ago, the great Kenny Everett. This was all done in the best possible taste. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's great to be here. And I have to say a, a real, a real a, a sincere thank you to Anthony for allowing me to take the hot seat now for a few minutes to have a little bit of fun. So, uh, you know what? Without further ado, I'm going to bring my friend Anthony back now and let him take the seat and let him steer this magnificent ship. <laughs> Anthony, come Hello on there. Hello there. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> I bet you're all surprised by that, huh? What do you think? Would he do? Would he do a good job? Would he get to take over? <laughs> yeah, very good. So obviously, this is Tom King on Gala in full regalia. I'm Anthony Murphy. We tried to get Tom on last week Fair through miserably. online, and we couldn't. So we said we'll go one better. We'll bring him into the library. <laughs> and hello to Michelle Woodburn, who's in California. Alan Hoskins is in Tipperary. Hello, Alan. Amanda Morgan is saying hello. Blue hearts all around. Wayne Bird is in the house. Good evening, Wayne. Brendan Byrne is, of course, near Glendalough in the county of Wicklow. Elaine says it's minus two in Texas. I don't believe it. It was 11 degrees here earlier on. So we have uh, nine degrees on you, Elaine. Uh, Facebook user. Oh, that's a uh, mythical Ireland community. So I have to quickly check who that is. I'm back stateside. Always hard to leave clear. That is uh, Anne Scott Doherty, undoubtedly. Hello, that's Anne. who that is. Yes, indeed. That's who exactly who that is. Chile, Oregon. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Marianne Kindia has joined us. Can't stay. We'll watch later. Brilliant stuff, Marianne. Thanks for saying hello. Braxton May has joined us. Uh, I think I may have had the wrong comment up there. Anyway, please forgive me. Robin Moonshadow. Hello, Robin. How are things? Welcome to the library. Michael Pike says, wakey, wakey. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tom. Yes. Howdy, folks, from Chile, Wisconsin. That's Catherine Woodruff. Hope you're well and snug. Well, look at this. He's got half a sheep on him. Of course he's snug. <laughs> hey, careful, Tom. People might talk. <laughs> Anna Liffey's in the house. Good evening to you. Uh, Marianne is saying hello to Tom. Uh, hello, hello, Marianne. <laughs> unsurprisingly <laughs> uh who is in albuquerque that's mark monoz uh, mark a very good afternoon to you from the boyne valley desiree riley what desiree. a great surprise How you doing? hey i know it's it's showbiz time now <laughs> um, uh, you haven't got the banjo with you no 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 uh because you you couldn't top that nation, Next time. nationwide appearance <laughs> Sing, singing us out at the end of a, uh, a brilliant slot on nationwide and orty adrian beglin is in the house good evening to adrian uh, Michelle Woodburn is saying a hearty hello to Tom. Hello, Michelle. Sue Prenter, great to see you, Tom. Hello, That's Sue. Under award. I thought Anthony had changed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know we're twins? <laughs> in in the sense of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito I... kind of twins, you know. <laughs> Archaeoastronomy database. That's Ty. What a surprise to see our great Smith. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, it must be a lightning thing, as Anthony looks different. Says. Uh, Mark Munoz, <laughs> Patricia Pack says, a real live Viking. <laughs> uh, not quite, but I mean, a lot of people say that. I can't. You're just, he's just missing the horned helmets for that kind just of stuff. A few hairs as well. Uh, Michaela, <coughs> is it Birch, is in Arklo. Great metalwork. There you go, Tom. Great comments Thank you, coming sir. in there. Thank you so much, Anne McCallum is in the house. Had another mighty snowstorm last week and more snow today. It's Canada. Be oh, careful, wow. Anthony. I think he likes that seat. <laughs> you hear it squeaking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I've been doing live virus myths on that chair for two and a half years. So. It's got personality, you know. It'll be three years in yeah, March. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. 
Um, so yeah, I'll have to get a new chair. <laughs> <laughs> Mariana Dunn is excited. Hello, Brilliant Mariana. Stuff. And it's sunny in Virginia. Brilliant. Spread that around. Um, Samantha Healy. Uh, Tom, you've got great taste indeed. <laughs> Possible. <laughs> Suzanne, uh, Susan Scott is in Connecticut. Uh, surprised to see Tom. A pleasant surprise, no doubt. I was wondering if I fell into Lord of the Rings or something, <laughs> says Robin. <laughs> uh, Jana Scott is saying hello from Wyoming. We don't often have viewers from my wow. Wyoming. Fantastic stuff. Away from here. A very good afternoon to you. Barbara Murphy says that Lexi Erickson and I are at the legendary Tucson Gem Show. So this is just a quick hi and goodbye. Love seeing Tom King during the opening oh, monologue. Hello, hello to Barbara. Barbara and to Lexi. Have a great hi, day at the Gem Show. We'll, <coughs> we must visit someday, Tom. I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Ryanair flight to Tucson. We'll have to look at that uh, there I don't tonight know. now. Uh, Paula Sullivan <laughs> is saying hello from Tennessee. Brilliant stuff. Marsha Downs is loving this. Uh, doesn't take much, does it? Because like, all we're doing is just being giddy. Uh, <laughs> There's the red breast. Did you hide it? Oh, did I hide it? <laughs> no, I finished it. <laughs> uh, Samantha Healy says, congrats, Tom, on your award. Thank you so much, Samantha. John Main is in San Francisco, where it's dry, which is good, but it's cold. Okay. We can take that. It's winter time. Hi, John. Karen Murphy Beglin is in the house saying hello to both of Hi, us. Karen. You're very welcome to the uh, stream. Karen Fayo Lockton says it's cold in Boulder. Uh, up to five... Fahrenheit, wow. up from minus three below zero. So I presume that's sort of ridiculously cold in Celsius terms. Alva Kelly says, Trinonoa, listening by the candlelight with a cup of cocoa. Oh, Tom lovely. King is here. Yeah. Hey. Thank you, Alva. Hello, Glad Alva. that you're... And that sounds really comfy. That's the way I sort of picture you all in blankets with a cup of tea and candles lit, Drum. you know? Um, Susan Scott says, half a sheep <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gary says, it's another fine day on the sod. Hey, He's Gary. not wrong. It was uh, quite a nice day until the clouds took over. But look, it didn't rain. Chungus Khan is in the house. On Gawa, Conas Tautu. On Gawa, it's Anthony. Um, it's the Michael. It's the Anthony and Tom show, says Michael. <laughs> Deirdre Sheridan says, great to see you both. Hello, Deirdre. Hi, Deirdre. Good evening from... Drahada from the Boyne Valley. Beside us. Elaine Dent Lingenfelter is su wonderfully surprised. Hello, Nigel Elaine. Plunkett is saying good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ma Nigel. Nigel. I wonder whereabouts in the world you are. You may have told us previously, and I apologize if I've forgotten. Um, uh, somebody said, I don't know who that is. Oh, it's Mark. Anthony, you need to grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> I tried once, and after a month, uh, people said, What's going on? There's a bit of fluff on your face. So I said, No, never again. <laughs> Eric. Uh, Makara, um, and it's minus nine Celsius today in Ontario. Hey, there is no competition here between us and Canada. We're at the same latitude. We're 20, 20 degrees warmer. We'll keep it that way. <laughs> Carol, is it Sir Chirads? Says Aloha from Waikiki, which I believe is in Hawaii. Wow, hello, brilliant. Hello. Carol, a very good wow. morning. I presume it is morning. over there. Is it? Is Ooh. it Tuesday morning there, yeah. or is it? Yes, I think it is. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for Hello, joining Carol. us from Hawaii. Fantastic surprise. Pat is in Vermont. First time visit. You're very welcome, Pat. Please make yourself comfortable. Make yourself feel at home. Don't forget that if you're watching on YouTube, so subscribe to the channel. If you're watching on Facebook, please do visit the Mythical Ireland community and like that one as well. And don't forget to visit the website, mythicalireland.com. Uh, Robin Edgar is saying it's snowy in Montreal. I have three to four feet of snow on my balcony and snow is still falling. Wow. Hey, Robin. I hope you have plenty of food in the in the larder, uh, Robin. Um, I would so love to be at your dinner table tonight with you two. <laughs> We're like the history guys, you That's know. <laughs> yeah. The, like the prehistory guys, pre he said. Guys, yeah. uh, the <laughs> Irish version. <laughs> uh, Edith Walsh is in Blaze. Uh, is it, no, but is it Bosey? How do you pronounce that, Bosey? Is it Boys? Bosey? Oh, Please, somebody tell me how to pronounce that. Uh, Edith, you're very welcome from Idaho. Also a first-timer. Brilliant stuff. Hello, Edith. Edith. Thank you for joining us. Porrick Born is in Mount Melick in Leash. Love uh, Leash. Uh, fabulous part of the world. Uh, Nora Gaffney O'Connor says, Gia Eve, August, Amadra, Sable on show. Hello, Sable. Con there's an island called Sable Island. Congrats, Makara. Tom, delighted. What a pleasant surprise ah, to see the two of you there. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> uh, Keith Doran is saying hello from Australia. Oh, Good hello, morning. 
Good day, mate. Morning, Keith. Good morning. It's Tuesday morning where Keith is wow. in Australia. Brilliant stuff. Joe Butler, Auntie Joe is in the house. I need Hi, Tom's sheepskin. <laughs> it's zero Fahrenheit, which is minus 17 <laughs> Celsius. Maybe a high of minus 15 Celsius in Colorado. Sunny, though. <laughs> hey, always look on the bright side. You know, Kelly Me Kelly is in Seattle from the Emerald City to the Emerald Isle. And I always say that I'm very fond. I'm very fond of you all, but I love the fact that we have so many followers in Hi, the Kelly. Pacific Northwest wow. where the climate is apparently very Irish. Yes. Um, Carol says uh, Monday. Okay, Monday. It's Monday morning. Okay. okay, very good. So you're the other side of the dateline from... Uh, Keith in Australia um, and people chatting amongst themselves which is brilliant uh, where I am in Ontario says Anne McCallum is the same latitude as Rome wow so we're further north than you are and we're a lot warmer because of the Gulf Stream aren't we lucky uh, office care that's Peter Woods who's in Monaster Boyce in the county of Louth good evening Peter thanks for joining us always a great pleasure Hi, Peter. to welcome you into the library uh, Facebook user uh, that's Janet Moran. Hello, Janet, saying hello to both of us. Hi, Janet. So great to see you both in the library. And we are caught up on the comments. Yay! <laughs> Tom, come here, listen to me. Talk to me for a second. Now, let me put that microphone. Is just that microphone work from the center? Oh, I think so. Because they would have told us by now. They would have said no sound. This is like the newsreader now. So come here. Now, you have been preparing for this showcase thing for several months. I have. And uh, isn't it true to say that you didn't know what to expect? Absolutely. And that was the expectation. And, you know, my dear friends in the Leo Enterprise Ireland were giving me that opportunity. And uh, I remember being listed with about five or six artists, you know, three of which had experience from last year and were very good to kind of mentor us yeah. and give us a little bit of a heads up on how you should prepare, how you should display your work, you Just know. Focus that while you're talking. All, all the preparation to go with. Because at the end of the burn. day, when you get involved, you're investing your time preparing. Yeah. So you prepare, you prepare a body of work, you prepare all the logistics, the stayovers, all that has been being prepared. And ultimately it's a cost, so it's an investment. Now you have three days again, showtime. So it starts, say, uh, you've set up Saturday. So that's a day lost. You have Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, which is showtime. And ultimately you set yourself your criteria or, well, what's your expectation? Well, definitely the expectations and the objectives were go and network, go and showcase, go and enjoy it. Show off and your wares. Show off yeah. the wares. Enjoy the conversations. Enjoy the atmosphere and the ambience. Enjoy talking, having the fun and having the laugh with new friends. Yeah. Look and seek opportunity. And more importantly, bank the experience and let's all get safely home. And we can reflect on it in the coming weeks and say, right, we made an honest effort. Yeah. We have the start of the year up and running. The, the month of January uh, is, is is all but you know over. And uh, we start to navigate into the new year. And look what's happened. And the old saying, and even my dear, Mar my dear mother said, you know what, go and shake the tree and see what falls. Oh, yeah. And it's a lovely old Irish saying regarding, you know Absolutely. what, seek opportunity and it'll find and you. you. Yes, and if you don't, just for the benefit of the viewers who are not in Ireland, what's Leo? Um, the Leo they is, may not know yeah, what Leo is. Hello to Padder, by the way. Correct Padder right. has joined us. Hello, Padder, Hello, yes. Padder. It's a short, uh, short abbreviation for the local enterprise office. Okay, so, so we, they help, they help. up-and-coming businesses Correct and like right. yourself. Correct and right. They take us under their they wing. They give you advice they and give us some their financial wing. support. Correct and, and right. Get you yeah. up, uh, up and running. Quiva Delaney, the business manager, couldn't wish for a better mentor. And, you know, she basically get gets you under her wing. She gets the team under her wing. And she is so proactively... You know, working with the with the craft and the you know the art people to say, look, there's the chance. Here you go. Let's let's run with it now and see what happens. And of course, you know, all of a sudden it's showtime, Sunday morning. And I remember getting it, having a conversation with one of the ladies, the showcase organizers, giving me a heads up, saying, please be down at the awards for four o'clock. And I went, well, thank you very much for the for the for the information. Absolutely, looking forward. And look what happened after that then. Hello, Adina. Adina Sparks has joined us. Hello, Adina. Stepping in a little bit late. That's perfectly okay. So uh, <clears throat> at about quarter past four on Sunday afternoon, Correct. I got a phone call yes. from this man. And he <laughs> said, are you sitting down? I had to ask myself as well. And I said, well, I kind of am. I was actually doing a, a job here in the office. Yeah. And uh, when I finished, I sat down. Yeah. And I was expecting Tom to say, you know, I've just done a nice bit of business or I just met somebody, uh, you know, uh, famous uh, or important. Uh, Coda says hello, uh, by the way. Uh, uh, you might hear him in the background uh, there. And so I did sit down. Yeah. And then Tom uh, said, he gave me the news, uh, which uh, was, what was it, Tom? Well, what happened there was this four o'clock came around and what was happening there was there was about seven or eight 
categories, each of which was had their own separate awards. And I entered the gift and the home awards, being the St. Bridget's Cross. It would make a nice gift and it'd make you know a nice I'm gonna show this off while he's <clears throat> talking, ladies and gentlemen. So the, the awards were starting to be given out, and all of a sudden seven or eight awards was given out, and I and I was down to my last day uh, card. So I had the ace of spades almost, you know. So uh, the lady then announced over the stage, she says, and now for the overall winner and showcase 2023. And she started talking about a story. And all the words she was using was very familiar with me. Culture, ancestral, symmetry, green. And then she came in with the, the, the key words, you know, blacksmith and cross. Wow. And the overall winner, on Gobba's Iron Works and Experience, Tom King. That's what it just hit me. And, it and was so a lovely just experience. Just to put you in the picture here, I think we said this last week, but just to reiterate, yeah. there were 384 exhibitors Correct. and over 3,500 items on yes. display. Correct. And this beautiful cross here yeah. uh, was the overall winner. Correct. Not just a category winner, yeah. the overall winner. Yeah. Now, I have to say, I, I'm glad I was sitting down. Because I might have fallen over. I, I still you can't know? believe it, Anthony. Honestly it's just speaking, fantastic. I mean, I've had a whirlwind of a week. I didn't even know what day it was. Even today, all of a sudden, one day even. That's that's how out of sync I've been. Yeah. Because the phone, I've never seen a phone to receive so much good well wishes. And the correspondence I have to navigate through. Oh, by the way, I still have to get back to people out of courtesy, just as an acknowledgement of thanks for spending a little bit of time and sending on such well wishes it's been overwhelming yeah never seen anything like yeah, yeah. It. wonderful it's, thing it's to experience. Be, well i of course i shared your news as soon as it was official yeah i shared it on the mythical Ireland community and on you know the instagram and the facebook yeah. page yeah and the response was incredible yeah and it was all you know heartiest congratulations Correct. well deserved and of course look let's uh, acknowledge something here that Tom isn't a fly by nighter, he isn't a chancer, he, he isn't uh, one of these kitsch salesmen that you meet. <laughs> Tom is the real deal, he's got the passion, well, he's got yeah. the personality, and above all, he's got the skill. Well, and I think you can see that. Well, in this work. I have to say this, absolutely, and, and I'd fabulous. love to talk, even given the opportunity I have here with my so dear beautiful. friend Anthony, what he's done to our community, and not only that, what he's done providing the support the encouragement and the opportunity. Look what happened. I mean, I'm not even a year in business, my good friend. The year hasn't rolled around. Is that right? No, it's February when I can say oh. 12 months has passed. Wow. And within that year... Look at what's happened. Short, Meteoric rise. Shortlisted for the awards November last. Yeah, and the Meads Business and Tourism Awards. Expression interest for the showcase. And look what happened. We've started the year off with our award. Look at that. I mean... There it is. It's, it's official, it's folks. Dreams are made. Showcase Award 2023. Yeah. Um, most importantly, Tom... If somebody is looking to uh, to to buy your work, yes, where do they? What do they do right now? What's well, the best thing that they can what do? What they could do right now is click onto the Mythical Ireland website, mythicalireland.com. Have a look at on Gobba Iron Work Creations. I'm already saying that. Is that hand forged hand artworks. Forged I think it is in the shop drop in the down. Shop yeah, and very welcome, and I very much appreciate the support and thank you kindly. Yeah. Just tell us a little bit about when when did the idea for the Bridges Cross come into your head and tell us what happened? Well, there was always that very old story of Bridget looking over to Smith amongst others. Well, she's a patron. Of, she is. In, in, yeah. So just just the early the pre the pre Christian version of Bridget, Correct. according to Cormac's glossary. Yeah. She was a patron of three things. Poets, physicians and Smiths. Correct. She was a patroness of the Smith. Right. And you thought that that was very oh, important. Magic. Because if I said to you, Anthony, if, if I said to you, I'm setting you a task to stand and work at a forge nine, ten hours a day on your own and see how you feel. after. I'd probably week's get work. burnt. No, but you've got this atmosphere of, OK, the people that you aspire to, who inspire you to, to continue. And in, in a sense of a traditional craft, something very sacred. And this is going back a long, long time where when you dig a little bit further on the blacksmith with Bridget, she looked so favorably on those who worked the elements, the water and the fire. And that's a magical kind of a ingredient or a mindset mm. to carry into a forge. Like I, I remember even getting ready for the showcase and I was sitting at the forge some of the mornings. And remember you spoke of, what was that type of frost? The tor frost? The hoar frost. The hoar frost. You can imagine standing start ready to start a day's work and to, to scrape the, the hoar frost off an anvil. Yeah. <laughs> you say to yourself, yeah. 
what am I doing? That's not normally how I start my day, folks, in fairness. No, I sweep the crumbs, last night's biscuit crumbs, off yeah. the keyboard. I mean, I, I get a fire lit, and that's fine. But when you have a tower fro or a whore frost uh, set and, and established, you know, all the tooling is that that bit more difficult to work because you just yeah. have to you have to get yourself into that condition saying, right, just get on with it. And all of a sudden, half a day's work's done or a day's work done, and look at the output. Look what you've done because you've, you've mined over matter. You didn't let the coal conquer, you know, their ability to make. Yeah. And you have to call on these, you know, you know, lines of strength. And you can call back on Bridget to, you know, to keep the Smith working. And in the fairness and in the context of the story of the Smith, especially now, this year is a monumental milestone of in the history of a state. We can now celebrate. It'll be generations from now that there may be another national holiday declared in a saintly manner. We may now never see it again. Yeah. So this year is a significant milestone. It is, of course. We will it's enjoy huge. a day off to enjoy with family in your own time to go and do as you please on a national holiday in honour of the great St. Bridget. And I produced, again, a steel St. Bridget cross. And it's the symbolic gesture that was presented at the Showcase Awards that I, I feel that delivered the, the top prize and the work itself. Yeah, the symbolism. Oh, of, of it. course, the well, symbolism the of it. The, well, the quality of it and the symbolism. I, I, I of have it. my quality. Yeah. There's yeah. No when, when did you start designing those? About. Uh, I remember we. Do you remember we had a launch there last year? Yeah. It was last February. Yeah, last in bulk. We had a competition. That's right. Presented the cross there for competition. Yes. So it was about four months before that that I was navigating my way through the design of the cross. Now I knew what I wanted to do, but having that confidence, I had to prove it by making, yeah. going through the process. Because if you have an idea regarding a design and an artwork, that's fine, bank it, now make it. Now you'll find as you navigate your way through the making, there's some challenges that are probably a bit more difficult than maybe you first assumed. So you have to kind of peel it back a bit and say, right, let's focus on the pain points and sort it out. So you, you make another one, a prototype two, prototype three. Yeah. So it took four prototypes. To I say, remember seeing one of your prototypes. And I was yeah. so happy because I can show you the very first one and I, and I wasn't happy with it because I had it in my mind what I wanted to do. But it didn't take the box on how it how it presented itself. It yes, was yeah, much yeah. more difficult to make than it should have been. Yeah. And then I, I I came up with the idea of the one we have here, and I I was so happy to say, a eureka moment, the box was ticked, and it did more than I had expected, which is a lovely place mm. to be when you have an art idea, and it delivers more than your expectation, and you're just the cat that got the cream. Then you know. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's 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 beautifully finished. I mean, actually, when you see it. At, at first, you actually wonder what it's made of. Some people think it's made of glass. Yes, and that was Some the people feedback. have commented yeah, that, that was, it looks the, like it's made of glass yeah, was, because of the finish yeah, on it. There was two ladies that, in the gorgeous. showcase, and they were so sensitive with the with even handling it because they assumed it was glass. Yeah, the, yeah, the clear yeah. coat gives that illusion. <laughs> Since you chuck it against the wall there, you'll soon find out that it's not made of glass. <laughs> but, that, but to have someone tell you that, it's very rewarding because yeah. you've gone beyond that, again, expectation. The body is steel, but it's a painted steel but it has the resilience so when you bring in the paint and there's quite a build up with there's three there's three prime coats on that different types of primer and base coat and then i come in with a semi-opaque white so i have a white base color to really set off the moss green and once the moss green is established the white comes through as highlights and then after that i've got paralyzed gold again to give it a little bit of dimension yeah. and then the hot rod sparkle which gives it that flicker wow. under the light because it does sparkle it does and then it the, really yeah. sparkles under the light. Yeah, the clear you know? coat protects that then. So it's so a, beautiful. The clear coat is a two-pack clear coat. It had, it had more with the hardener, again, to give it a bit more resilience. It's almost like an enamel. But again, when that goes up on the wall, that's a generational thing. It's like the Sacred Heart picture or the Sacred Heart lamp. The Sacred Heart lamp and the Sacred Heart picture is a very traditional Irish thing where it remains in the kitchen yeah. and it's passed on from generation to generation to generation. And it's, it's almost like the tabernacle of a chapel with the kitchen being the center point of a house. A very, they're all a very old traditional Irish venue where mm -hmm. much of the activity within the house is in the kitchen. The yeah. cooking, the eating, even the social. It's a lot of activity. And yes, a song, yeah, yeah. if you had Davo Grin along as well, because it's very fun. <laughs> we had a great time uh, with Davo with the, my mum. She loved him. The bow Davo. Oh, he, she loved him. Keep Can't an eye out, die. folks, on Mythical Ireland. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're hoping to have an announcement about Davo soon. Um, uh, Tom, <laughs> can I ask you, and come here, if the answer is that's none of your business because that's a trade secret, then please tell me so. Anne McCallum says, hopefully this award will help Tom get over, <laughs> get over his shyness and help him to tell us how he really feels. I'm looking for the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Said with not an ounce of irony, Anne. But how long does it take from beginning to end oh, to make one of yeah, these? Yeah, there's quite a length of time in that. There's certainly about 18 to 25 hours work on that. All those pieces of steel are all cut by hand. That in, much? Individually. Wow. 
Yeah, and actually that started off as one of the large pendants that I said, right, okay, I'm going to knock the center of it because I've got to use it to fuse the back of the cross. Yeah, I want to give it a bit of depth. I want to come off the wall when it's presented on the wall so that the ties on the ends of the legs stacks, stands off the wall but gives it depth. Yeah. I want to give it a bit of depth. Yes. So, uh, I mean, yeah, that's that's it's it's a labor of love, but it's so rewarding regarding the finished article because it, it when I put that now, this was the wonderful thing about the showcase was I got a communication last week to tell me, Congratulations, you've made the shortlist, you've made a very exclusive club called the Edit. Which, by the way, when you enter the showcase arena and come to the main doors, you're in behind the, the glass. Thing you panel. See, the first it? thing you see yeah. with a beautifully worded article around the art pieces talking about the makers and the inspiration. So, this was the first thing that you would have seen coming to showcase and that was so rewarding to see because i had three ladies come to me and say when we came to showcase we seen the same bridges cross we seen l95 and that's my boot number straight to me yeah. they were not interested in other things they came straight to me and of course that's fair i'm very humble to see that or hear that well it's, it's a lovely experience it's lovely to think that bridget is looking down on well and that's watching over well, you when you think as of, you continue yeah, that very ancient it, craft it's like when you come into you the know? dog and our friend the frizz we spoke to her there on the dog during the mural festival in drahada yes yes we spoke to her in drahada definitely not on dog no but i'm saying to you the the bridget's mural in Dundalk. oh of course yes yeah yes because when we Saint spoke to yes when we spoke to her with the with the mural uh, in, in Drogheda. The Morrigan. The Morrigan, big yeah. We knew she was working on the St. Bridget's mural in Dundalk as well. Oh, she had finished it. Oh, she had yeah. finished it, big yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were to see that then. And that's yeah. a wonderful oh. work. To stand beside that is absolutely it's outstanding. Yeah, it is yeah. wonderful work. And, and again, you know, that's a lovely thing to, to see and speak to the Frizz with because, again, with the blacksmith background, I am just so happy to see that because mm. that's inspiration, that, you know. Yeah, and yeah, you need yeah. inspiration. Any artist will tell you. What next for Ongoa, uh, folks? How could your star shine any brighter than that? Winner of the Best Overall Product Award at Showcase 2023. What is going to be the next magic to emerge from the Forge? I, As you probably know, I wear my Trisco pendant every day of the year. I want to say a quick hello to Monica Regley, who has joined us uh, after a music rehearsal hello, with Monica. mythical, very old Swiss songs. Wow, sounds fantastic. Moira McBride is in the house. Hello, Moira. Just to those who I didn't say hello to, I'm not sure if I said hello to Sandra Boothroyd earlier. Sandra, you're very welcome. And Sheila Gunn is in the house on the Mythical Learning community. Is so glad that she caught this. Uh, glad that you're enjoying it. Absolutely. Hello, Sheila. And of course, next Monday is the first ever official Bridget's Day public holiday in Ireland. Now, it's not Bridget's Day, as Bridget's Day is celebrated on the 1st. But Irish public holidays are always on a Monday, yeah. the Monday closest to uh, oh, the, the first of the month. So in this case, it's the sixth. Uh, next Monday, this day, next week, we will be celebrating the first ever Bridget's Day public holiday in Ireland, which is fantastic. Is. So I imagine that next week's uh, stream will all be about Bridget. Um, I can't imagine that we would talk about anything else. We could talk a little bit about... Um, uh, in bulk. Desiree wants to know, can we have an episode at The Forge? We can if we get better Wi-Fi. I have to look at my IT department. Because we did try last year when myself and Tom did the sit-down yeah. interview. We had to record that because the streaming, yeah. there wasn't uh, sufficient network coverage right. to do it with the phones. Yeah. So uh, if that happens, yes, absolutely, we will do an episode from The Forge. Yeah. Of course, of course, of course. Monica says, I must have one. <laughs> No problem at all. I think you know where to get them on the Mythical Ireland website. Um, so, yeah, uh, congrats again, Tom. And oh, Thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, you, uh, I didn't know you before the pandemic, before we started doing all these. Uh, I didn't know you the, the, the night I sat down at the beginning of the pandemic to oh, do the wow. first stream. Yeah. And uh, I, we got introduced fairly shortly afterwards. Yeah. And uh, it's been... Uh, my privilege to have to, to know you, and uh, I think that you deserve every success. Well, you're very purely kind. because if if you didn't have the skill, the passion and the personality alone would 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 make you skyrocket. Ash, it's good, you know. For, for sure. But having yeah. the skill combined with that, it's just it's a dream come true. It's the real deal, folks. This is him, the well, real deal, Tom know, King. I say, go. I say it again. You know, when you navigate. Everyone, we, we all navigate our, our way through life best we can, and we all come to certain crossroads. And of course, when the pandemic struck, I hit a crossroad, and there was a number of different avenues to pick. And of course, I picked the one and made the jump. 
and not looking back. It's the best thing he ever done. So brilliant. Uh, well, this I man agree. was so supportive, and our Tua. Well, huge thanks to everybody. Yes, the mythical Ireland community got a wonderful mention on RTE Delighted Nationwide that. No, yeah. on that program that was broadcast on Friday evening. Uh, if you're in Ireland, you can watch it back on the RTE player on RTE.ie. If you're outside of Ireland, there are probably ways you could watch it, but I'm not going to recommend them. Anyway, uh, Chungus says, Colgarges, Tom, congrats. Thank you indeed. Uh, Nora moment. wants to know if the next thing is an Oscar nomination, perhaps. She will try it now, Nora. <laughs> you never know. Watch John this Travolta. space. Hello. Watch this space. Brilliant stuff. Well, thanks, Tom. I will. You uh, want to change over? I'll sidle in now, if yes. you don't mind. I mean, I know that you're you're enjoying yourself there. Like that's the that's the prime spot there now. Well, I've got the best seat in the house now. Uh, and Coda is barking because he's so excited to see Tom. He's like, I want to see your award. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, so we are going to conclude our reading of uh, the Age of the Megaliths. <laughs> from In Search of the Awesome Mystery, which is Father Sean O'Din, the late great Father O'Din, uh, who was a Benedictine monk at Glenstall Abbey uh, and uh, who uh, uh, has written extensively about Irish mythology and about Irish spirituality and religious traditions, uh, overlapping uh, between the pre-Christian, uh, the Celtic, as it were, and the Christian. We finished last week um talking about um the monumental landscape of Brunabonia and we're going to pick up from there and uh, we will keep an eye on the comments as we go along Jazeera says I treasure my works from the forge especially my crescent pendant that you specially made with my sweet as Azalea's Azalea's name on it after she passed oh, yeah uh lovely a lovely gesture he could forge the Oscar for himself <laughs> says Brendan Burton <laughs> <laughs> I was able to watch it on the RTE site you named without a problem, says Elaine. Well oh, from, from home, not from Claire. Oh, good. Well, then you might be able to do so. So maybe you might try that. Go into RTE.ie, look for the player, and then just search for Nationwide is the name of the program. Uh, and uh, last, fr last Friday's episode will be the, the latest result because it's only broadcast once a week. Um, and uh, uh, enjoy that because it's a lovely... Uh, Looks like uh, Blonde had, had a lovely day. Of she the had forge. a ball. It's, it, it's she loved it though. Yeah. In my in my opinion, it's 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 impossible not to have a nice day <laughs> at the forge. A recognition and celebration of the goddess of the earth as the great mother, the origin, source, and sustainer of life in all its forms, must surely stand as a key notion in ancient thought to be expressed in various ways in statuary, architecture, painting, and ritual, and in the making of crosses, um, because in a way. Uh, Bridget was a great mother. She was known as Merlin and Nail, the Mary of the Irish. In this era in Ireland, in the transition from a hunter-gatherer society to the megalithic period, the domestication of cattle and growing of cereals developed and a more sedentary type of existence began. In other words, less movement, more settled. This involved a move towards the enclosure of fields, the idea of private property, and a certain control of nature not present in the past regime of a hunter-gatherer society, where people were dependent to a much larger degree on untamed nature. From hunting wild animals and the use of roots and herbs for food, to a settled lifestyle in which food could be stored for the rainy day, must have been a mighty step with enormous social consequences. Nevertheless, some see it as a traumatic break with nature, the beginning of the trend towards alienation from the earth, which is reaching crisis point in our own day. What is rarely mentioned and what must have been a major improvement in the progress of human development is the introduction of clothing as we know it today. In a relatively cold climate such as Ireland, people could hardly have gone around completely naked and must have used animal skins for clothing. <laughs> that's the best possible <laughs> <laughs> that's the real reason he's here is to as a as a sort of a model and a prop for all of the uh, kenny. discussions <laughs> kenny everett one had as it were to wait until a large animal presented itself for killing before getting a new suit and the animal may have been in no hurry as you can imagine all of this changed with the introduction of large flocks of sheep and the realization that their wool could be used for clothing yet again. <laughs> this is not pre by the <laughs> No, it absolutely <laughs> isn't. <laughs> In later Irish tradition, the phrase Cusk or 
is often found in association with the feast days of certain saints, such as Bridget and Govnet of Ballyvorni, or Ballyvorni. This prohibition of turning has proved to be something of a puzzle. What it means in practice is that no work involving the turning of wheels was allowed on the saint's feast. Spinning seems to be the archetype for this. The saint or goddess who preceded her being considered to be a culture heroine who first introduced spinning to the human race and so improved their lot immensely. It was considered only right and proper then to refrain from spinning on the goddess's own day as a mark of honor and respect. So the Kusk or Kossiv custom may have its roots in a very archaic period in the megalithic age itself. In the hunter-gatherer period, men and women must have felt themselves to be close relatives of the animals, who, like themselves, were forced by their own natures to kill smaller animals and eat vegetation to keep themselves alive. One is reminded of the many animal-headed gods of Egypt. The numbers of people in this pre-megalithic age in Ireland must have been very small and being semi-nomadic left no great visible remains or, as it were, put down no permanent roots, but followed the herds and foraged in the areas, providing an abundance of herbs for eating and medicine. And of course, that's one of the reasons that most of the Mesolithic sites of Ireland are found on the coast. And uh, we know that people live there in numbers because we find shell middens, the discarded shells of, of food that is being consumed along the coast. Intense cohesion within the group, teamwork and detailed organisation was necessary for successful hunting upon which life depended. When a hunter died, it is thought that he was not given burial as we understand it, but rather left on the ground to be devoured by wild beasts and carrion birds. And this may be the origin of the later megalithic custom of leaving the bodies of the dead exposed on a platform for the carrion birds, such as the Celtic bow, to denude to the skeleton in the process called excarnation. Then the bones could be cremated and the ashes placed in the tomb. In this, the megalithic people may be returning to the practice of an earlier age, following the well-known phenomenon of a later race still attached to the old ways of their predecessors. It can be noted also that a profound religious intuition may be involved in this archaic practice of excarnation. The primitive hunter depended largely on the wild animals and birds that he killed for his sustenance, and the art of hunting, according to later cultures, laid down very precise rules, such as killing only the weakest animals, killing only what was immediately necessary for food, and so forth. A quasi-understanding existed between the hunters and the animal herds. Uh, Desiree says, I think Tom needs to co-host and sit back in, 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 and sit in back of Anthony for every reading now. Absolutely loving the on-screen <laughs> dynamic between you two. Yeah, we're like the two Ronnies, you know. Uh, uh, the uh, the O, oh, the letter O has broken on our teleprompter. Uh, no, the letter E. Good, good ovnong. Ho hollow is the nows of ton. <laughs> uh, Anna L is in uh, the house saying hello from Balbriggan. Great to see you both. Well, great to see you also, definitely. And welcome, welcome. Um, or to E Nationwide, just checking. Stephen Bell says, being from Bohermine, I'm quite biased, but well done to Tom. And I have a feeling this is only the first chapter. Hello, Stephen. I have Great no doubt. You. Yeah, I have no <laughs> doubt that it is. Hello, indeed. <laughs> Rebecca Elizabeth of Era says, happy Bridget's Day, everyone. Yes, uh, happy Bridget's Day, which is coming up in two days' time. Uh, and don't forget that the astronomical uh, in bulk is the 3rd of February this year. Um, I think I have to write something about that. Um Yes, 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 yes. One may see then the exposure of the hunter's corpse to be devoured by the wild beasts and birds as a kind of return gift to them. Throughout his lifetime, the animals, through the gift of their bodies, supplied him with food, and now his death and his exposure in his return gift is his return gift to them, a recognition of what they have contributed to his welfare. This idea, too, may lie behind the archaic custom of hunting the wren, still observed in Ireland. As described by Sir James Fraser in The Golden Bough, which we were reading from recently, the ritual was particularly elaborate in the great medieval city of Carcassonne in France and extended over a long period. In its simpler and better known form, hunting the wren takes place in many parts of Ireland, being particularly popular in Ondangan, uh, County Kerry, uh, which is Dingle, where it involves musicians 
disguise and processions through the town. Sadly, however, the wren, which should form the centre of the proceedings, is now missing, and this changes its whole nature, making it merely a popular pageant rather than a serious rite carrying a serious message to mankind. This was not always the case. In The Year in Ireland, Kevin Danaher quotes a January 1894 note in the graphic entitled With the Wren Boys in Dingle. The Wren Boys, of course, the, the, the hunting of the Wren happened on St. Stephen's Day, the day after Christmas. The Wren Boys, having killed a Wren, tie it to a holly bush on a pole. Two of them decorate their heads and shoulders with straw and wear masks with single eye holes. These also carry large bladders tied to sticks with which to clear the way. Two others, also masked, dress in petticoats and are supposed to represent dancers. Six more carry flags, while one plays a fife and another a drum. Hunting the wren occurs as a celebration of the winter solstice, the day on which the sunbeam enters Newgrange. It, in practice, it takes place on St. Stephen's Day, which is also a big occasion for the fox hunters on horseback. One wonders if there is any connection. Helen Hirsch Chatter has joined us. Late, no brown zone, no to apologise. Spike Willow is also here. Hello, no Hello, problem. Frank. You're all very welcome. Essentially, the right consists of killing a wren, a tiny bird who resides in hedges and cannot fly very well, but who is very prolific and who lives in a house-like nest. The, then the dead wren is tied by the leg to a holly bush and carried around from house to house by masked figures. Musicians generally play a major part and the group stop outside each house they visit and recite the ritual formula. The ran, the ran, king of all birds. And of course, the ran is just a parochial pronounce or a colloquial pronunciation of the wren. On St. Stephen's Day, he was caught in the furs. Although he is little, his family is great. I pray you, dear lady, give us a trait. T or A T E. Uh, uh, again, colloquial for treat. Up with the kettle and down with the pan. Give us some money to bury the ran. The housewife then makes her contribution, and the wren boys slash girls move off to the next house. In Wales, the dead wren was carried in a specially constructed little wooden house adorned with ribbons uh, and the bearers pretended they were carrying a heavy coffin. In the Isle of Man, at the end of day, the wren was buried in the local graveyard. The money collected from the various houses in the locality was later spent on a party or wren ball on a parallel with the biddy ball of the Bree Job. Speaking as an observer at the Dingle Wren celebration, the author Steve McDonough describes the experience. The Wren is drama which has not only dispensed with the proscenium arch, it has dispensed with the theatre. Indeed, it is a kind of drama which predates either structure. And in terms of the much discussed relationship between audience and players, it is an event in which there is no such distinction. A drama of participation then, and an experience belonging to a people and a place. He describes the extraordinary scenes taking place in Dingle when the Wren boys arrive on the streets. At the corner, the shape of the hobby horse emerged, a white form suspended in the air where it turned, its dark carrier at first merging with the darkness. Then the banner held aloft, spanned the street as it negotiated the corner, bone by stocking, borne by stocking masked figures. And now the followers on the pavements, costumed masked figures, some linking arms, others cavorting and dancing, some weaving drunkenly with heads down, others jaunty, arms waving. The sound built, swirling around the tangle of buildings at the corner as the band entered the street. The silent stage of minutes earlier had become a sea swarming with bizarre images, the air thick with cacophony. Light and life had entered, raw and crude, energetic and raucous, a celebration, a festival, a shared drama. Details of the experience might be forgotten, the experience would not. While with the absence of the funeral parade of the Wren from house to house with its ritual significance may be lost in Dingle, the extraordinary, extraordinarily primitive and archaic character of a singularly ancient rite lives on and the participants are seized by the influx of raucous life force. Why did I introduce this extraordinary local phenomenon of the Wren in a discussion of the hunter-gatherer and megalithic periods in Ireland? Because it may well be that in the rite of hunting the Wren, we may have a precious relic of an incredibly ancient ritual which enshrines and illustrates the religious thought processes of prehistoric people in Ireland. The rite can be divided into two parts, 
the hunting and the killing of the wren, which takes place beforehand. And secondly, the funeral procession of the wren with its various stops or stations at private houses to collect contributions of money or drink. And this is a quote from Danaher, 1972. Mr. and Mrs. Hall visiting Cork about 1840 described it thus. For some weeks preceding Christmas, crowds of village boys may be seen peering into the hedges in search of the tiny wren. And when one is discovered, the whole assemble and give eager chase to until they have slain the little bird. In the hunt, the utmost excitement prevails, shouting, screeching and rushing. All sorts of missiles are flung at the puny mark. Some versions of the ram or poem recited outside each house visited contained the words, We hunted him up and we hunted him down. A priest commenting on the practice in his parish recently remarked to me, these big fellows should be ashamed of themselves going out and killing a tiny wren. However, this difficulty had been anticipated in certain areas. In some cases, the wren boys carry around little toy birds on a decorated beer, and they themselves have ribbons and coloured pieces of cloth pinned to their clothes. The wren boys were not always welcome in the growing respectability of 19th century towns. Olive O'Sullivan of Callan County Tipperary, sorry, Callan County Kilkenny, Oh dear, the Kilkenny and Tip, the, the hurling rivalry there is so intense that the mere suggestion that Callan might be relocated to Tipperary, they'll be firing schlitters at me in any moment. This is in 1828. The rabble of the town going round from house to house with a wren in a holly bush, looking for money so that they can be drunk at the end of the day. It is a bad custom to give money to them. What is the meaning of this singular right, which even in a debased form, has still still has the ability to reach some hidden depths of the human psyche. A major <coughs> examination of the right has been made by Sylvie Muller and her findings condensed in her long article, The Irish Wren Tales and Ritual, to pay or not to pay the debt of nature. When Irish, Manx and Welsh have drolin, dran and drew, which may be connected to the word dri for druid, other European languages associate the wren with kingship, French, Riotelet, Italian, Regolo, Greek, Basilius. Then there is the well-known legend explaining this association. According to the legend, the birds decided that they wanted a king to rule over them all, a king of the birds. The bird who could fly highest would be chosen. A contest was arranged. The little wren knew that he had no chance whatsoever. When nobody was looking, the tiny wren jumped up on the back of the powerful eagle. All the birds took off, and the mighty eagle soared above up, all, up above all the others. When he had reached his zenith, the wren took off from the eagle's back as from a launching pad, and was seen to soar above all. Clever little devil. <laughs> from this, the wren was declared to be the king of all birds. This brings us back to the idea of the ritual killing of the divine king when he showed signs of aging. We had this uh, with Fraser's Golden Bow in our recent episodes. When he showed signs of aging or infirmity, or at the end of a set number of years on the throne, as discussed at length by Sir James Fraser in The Golden Bow. Mm. <laughs> Sir James gives numerous examples of the custom, especially from Africa, and examines the rationale behind the usage. Fundamentally, the theory was that the fertility of the land the peace and prosperity of the kingdom depended on the health, ability and effectiveness of the god king. If the king grew old, sickly or had some physical defect, this reduced the fertility of the land and rendered his reign ineffective. Moreover, his spirit would be affected by the weakness of his body. And when passing on his spirit, sorry, when passing on his spirit to his successor at his death, his successor would receive a weakened, attenuated spirit, leaving him ill prepared for his royal duties. Even in the much later Irish tradition, the king was required to be gone uh, vocal without physical blemish. And according to the legend, even the great king of Tara, Cormac MacArt, whom we mentioned in relation to the, his burial at Rossnery near Newgrange, had to resign from the kingship after losing an eye. Similarly, in the case of Nuada, king of the Tua de Danon, after he lost an arm in battle. And of course, we discussed that in many an episode. The physician, physician Mirch provided him with an artificial arm, and he is still known as Nuadu, uh, uh, Nuadu Lov Arigat, or Arigat Lov, uh, Nuadu of the Silver Arm. I'm just going to quickly catch up on any comments that we might have missed. Um, 
this was that was an awesome episode about ritualistic regicide yes and q uh, discussion of bog bodies in the national museum tarini pendleton has joined us from laguna beach california tom king is in the library today hello, tarini. Uh, tarini uh he will be very very happy to say hello to you hi tarini uh for me it's a privilege to see a wren i do occasionally see them in the garden uh, i saw one here the other day but it's occasional they're not regular visitors um uh, did it, Anya Ryan is here. I'm not sure if I said hello uh, earlier, Anya. Good evening. Good uh, good night. I wear my various pieces, but also use them as paperweights and art. They are multi-purpose. Brilliant. Uh, Deirdre Sheridan is in the house. I'm not sure if we said hello to you, Deirdre. Maybe we did. Maybe we didn't. I'm just making sure that I haven't missed. Adele Perth is here, watching from Australia, where it is Tuesday morning. Hi, Adele. And we have, uh, that's our second Australian viewer. We also have someone watching from Hawaii where it is Monday morning. As if things weren't confusing, you know. Night, Monday night time in Ireland. Monday afternoon in the States. Morning. Tuesday morning in Australia. Monday morning in Hawaii. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. We've got viewers in every time zone, folks. Um, Helen Hirsch. I think we said hello, Helen, earlier, did we? Jumping on late. Yeah, I think uh-huh. we did. I think we did. I think we did. Good stuff stuff darn missed it says callow shocknessy the wonderful thing about missing something on live irish myths is the episode will be available to completely replay in its entirety once it's finished there you go uh, fraser makes a comparison between the regicide system and the legend of the priest king of nemi from which comes the title of his great work the golden bow the sacred tree at the lake of nemi in italy the sanctuary of the goddess diana was guarded by a runaway murderer who had made his way to Nemi, killed the reigning king-priest guardian, cut a branch of the tree, or the mistletoe on it, and took up his position as the new guardian, the Rex uh, Nemorensis, king of the grove. He then began his anxious vigil until a younger, younger and stronger runaway criminal arrived and killed him. Speaking of the Samarin king of the Malabar coast of India, Fraser remarks, It was an ancient custom for the Samarin to reign but 12 years and no longer. If he died before his term was expired, it saved him a troublesome ceremony of cutting his own throat. Very nasty stuff. On a public scaffold erected for that purpose. Perhaps the best known example of regicide is the case of William II, King of England, who was the third son of William the Conqueror. He was killed on the 2nd of August, a significant date, referred to in the records as the morrow of Lamas, Lunasa, the great Celtic feast at the beginning of the harvest, called after the god Lu Love Father, and falling halfway between summer solstice on 21st of June and the autumn equinox on 22nd of September. The story was that Rufus, a very effective and popular king, belonged to the old religion. His period of office had ended, and according to the story, an, in quotes, an accident was arranged. He's going to be swimming with the fishes. (laughs) (laughs) The king and his loyal courtiers went off to the New Forest, Hampshire, for a deer hunt. But during the hunt, the king stepped accidentally in front of an arrow meant for a deer, and so ended his life and his reign as divine king. William Rufus's body was taken to Winchester by way of Otterbourne, where today King's Lane and King's Mead record the event. To return to the question of the Drolin, or hunting the wren, as it is known in Ireland at the present day. Is there some connection with the custom of regicide, in which the king is put to death when his period of his reign is over? There are some obvious connections. The king is involved in both cases, a real human king and the wren, the king of all birds. Moreover, the rite is performed on a sacred day of the ancient calendar, the winter solstice. As in the case of William Rufus, a hunt is involved. Could it be that the wren who is killed in the hunt stands for the king who is killed in the forest to make way for his successor, the new king? Fraser describes the very elaborate form the rite took in Carcassonne in southern France in the early 19th century. On the first Sunday of December, young people went to the hedges to hunt the wren, and whoever killed the wren was declared king. They returned to the town in procession, led by the king who carried the dead wren hanging from a pole. On the evening of the last day of the year, the Wren boys marched through the town to the sound of the fife and drum and the light of torches, the king carrying the dead Wren on a pole. An interesting ritual then took place as they stopped at each house. One of the Wren boys wrote on the door with chalk, 
Vive le Roy, long live the king, and the date of the year about to begin. The usage is strangely reminiscent of that uh, at the beginning of the Easter vi vigil, not village, Easter vigil in the Roman Rite, where the priest, using a sharp knife, traces the letters Alpha and Omega and the date of the current year on the wax of the large paschal candle, saying, Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega, the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet, all time belongs to him and all the ages, to him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. Then the priest inserts five grains of incense in the candle, saying, by his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen. Then the paschal candle is lit from the new fire, as the priest says, may the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. The faithful then light their candles from the paschal candle and the light and life of the risen Christ communicates itself to them. What a fabulous piece of dramatic art this is. Outside the door of the church, with the faithful gathered around in the darkness of the night and the new fire of Easter, symbol of renewed life, blazing in the background. This is theatre at its most basic. Thank you, Coda, for the sound effects. Using only the most elementary props of fire, water, darkness and light. The open air setting at midnight, when it is neither day nor night, situates the right in a threshold position between two worlds, and its primitive character conveys something of the mysterious process in which the life of God is communicated to the human race through, through the death and resurrection of Christ, the God-man. Similarly, in the rite of hunting the wren, something of the spirit of the dead king would go out to enrich the people who contributed to the expenses of the funeral on the ritual path to the graveyard, on or whose doors were chalked with the words, Vive le Roy, until it was finally poured out on his royal successor. To whom did le Roy refer? To the dead king or the new king, his successor? Perhaps the phrase was deliberately ambiguous, like the version, the king is dead, long live the king. The old king is dead, but his spirit will pass into his successor, the new king, and long may he live before his spirit too will pass over to his successor. Glancing at another feature of the Wren rite, we become aware of what must have been a dominant concept in the megalithic and later eras, conscious as they must have been of the shortness and fragility of life. This is the concept of nature from which we have received everything and which at some time or other, but with certainty, will recall the debt we owe to her. Dr. Sylvie Muller, mentioned above, lays great stress on this vital notion, to pay or not to pay the debt of nature. And there ends the chapter and our reading of in search of the awesome mystery to do any more would, would would be to risk copyright infringement highly recommend you get your own copy published originally in 2011 by the columba press i'm not sure if it has been reissued i'm sure if you you can't find it new you'll find it in some of the secondhand bookshops um and one of the things that struck me during that discussion about the king's the king taking over from the king the previous king was the mythology of newgrange where we have angus taking over Sheed and Broga from his father, uh, the dog dad, and he tricks him by asking him for uh, a loan or a lend of Newgrange for a night and a day. And the next day, the dog dad comes back and Angus says, well, you know, it is it is in days and nights that the world passes. Thus, you have, <coughs> pardon me, granted me uh, Newgrange for eternity. And uh, dog dad acquiesces to that. And seen in that is uh, perhaps the wish of an agrarian community that the, the new sun that has shone in at the solstice, the one that has turned back up the horizon again, which we're seeing the benefits of now. Tom was just talking to me earlier about how the, there's a, there is now genuinely a lovely stretch in the evenings. Uh, he said that originally on the 22nd of <laughs> December, <laughs> but I didn't notice Ever it. The optimist. <laughs> you know, that um, once the year has begun to turn and the people who built Newgrange were observing that the sun was turning back and its light was changing inside the chamber in the passage, that that must have been a very powerful time to them, an aff affirmative time when they believed that, yes, indeed, the new sun god has come and the old one is departing. And I think that that's what that means. Delighted that Father Odin, even though he's essentially a Catholic uh, 
brother or monk or priest, um, yeah, clearly had the balls to say things that perhaps might have been unpopular uh, for clergy to say uh, and to be making comparisons between overtly uh, pagan uh, ritual uh, and religion uh, with what came later. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful human being uh, for that and many other reasons. I had uh, the fortune of, of meeting Tom pull in the chair again and we'll uh, say hello to a few more people before we close out for the night. It's actually just nine o'clock. Uh, for some reason, despite all that, uh, time has fl flown around altogether. Uh, Liz, Lisa uh, says, uh, I think you're a new uh, v visitor and you're very, very welcome, uh, Lisa. Says, 73% Irish here. Love this. Love hearing the dog also. Hey, I am at the US on the Oregon coast. Many thanks. Another one from the Pacific Northwest, which is uh, uh, fabulous. Thank you for the wonderful episode of Live Irish Myths, says Mariana Dunn. Loved your surprise guest. I found the Hi, RTE Nationwide TV broadcast on Channel 7 with Tom on my RTE Player app. Brilliant. Oh, lovely. lovely so that. that's, if you want to uh, have a look at that, folks, please do. Uh, it's wonderfully entertaining. And Blonad, who's the presenter of the program, clearly yes. had a thoroughly enjoyable she loved day. It, and it was lovely to have her. Did she have the Mound of the Sausages oh, or the had, Mythical Burger? She had the, the ultimate, the chicken tikka masala with a nice portion of rice and sourdough bread from our local George's Patisserie in Slane. George's Patisserie in Slane. Big <laughs> shout out to George Heiss of the Patisserie in Slane. Fabulous. It was the well best received. buns anywhere in Ireland, I'm telling you. And by the way, Tom, I don't think the High Kings of Tara ate chicken tikka masala. <laughs> <laughs> But the Mound of the Sausages clearly has a closer link. Um, uh, yes, 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 yes. There's, there's some really nice surprises. Now, I'm, I'm, I've got it all planned in my mind what to do for the summer. So I'm really looking forward to get some mechanization with some of the cooking methods, shall we say. Yeah, George. that time will fly around. Uh, I mean, it's nearly in bulk like, already. Yeah, George has wow. put the idea of the spit in my mind now for the summer. A pig on a spit. Something like that, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that would be very Neolithic. Yes, yes. It would yes. be even more Neolithic if you could hand out flint tools to people <laughs> and tell them to peel their own strips off the pig. <laughs> and if you're vegetarian, there's an apple in a bowl over there, you know. <laughs> Tracy Durso is talking to Catherine Woodruff. I'm not sure if we said hello, Tracy. Thanks, I don't recognise the name. You're very, very welcome if this is your first occasion. Dahi Bukhala is in the house, tuned in for my first live show. I've listened to a few repeats, but this is absolutely class. Brilliant stuff. And Tom Ongawa, uh, just to give him another plug, hey. showcase 2023 <laughs> overall winner on Goa. This man here and his beautiful Bridget's Cross <laughs> is in the library. Asher, look, I think I'll just let him take over. You're probably all fed up with me at this stage. And I wouldn't blame you. I'm fed up on myself. You know, uh, Adina says, making us all hungry now. I bet you you ate before you oh, came over. You feast. see, that's the thing. You have to eat before you I sit had down. To be banquet. Irish technical thinker says, can't believe we have two wizards live streaming. <laughs> <laughs> two chancers would be more like it. <laughs> Hello, Marcus. Uh, uh, who else? And uh, Joe, thank you, Joe, for sharing the link to Tom's oh, so connection. Kind, thank you so much. Yes. You're very so kind. If you're looking to get your hands on one of Tom's beautiful crosses or any of his other works, his Triscoll pendant, his Such mythical pleasure. letter opener, his uh, crescent moon pendants, his spiral pendant, his you know the, large Triscolls. Yeah, the, the get yourself on the that thing. showcase because nobody's seen. It was very much a, a gap that was identified. And of course, I have to kind of explain this, you know, the origins of it. You know, here we have a two of the Danic elevating themselves, coming from a Stone Age, navigating into an Iron Age, their R and D department all of a sudden discovering, hey, look what we've look, look what we've discovered if we get this. You know all these ingredients. There are R and D department. Yes, in the myth, in the mythical past, <laughs> and they combine all these ingredients at tremendous heat and let it burn away. Where some poor individuals was with a bellows and suck the air and push, catch the air and push, and all of a sudden they tap into the side of this vessel and out poured the molten metal, mm. creating the bloom. And there was tremendous excitement because all of a sudden they refine the bloom, they take the impurities out, they take the slag out, and now they have a billet. And a little bit more carbon as it discovered, and all of a sudden materials for the blades. And all of a sudden, you know, the materials then for, you know, ceremonial jewellery to decorate all the high kings and queens, Queen Maves, as they presented themselves on Tara. So that's my kind of niche. And 
it works it's working tremendously well i have a lot more ideas and i'm really looking forward to getting them it's no wonder when you think about it right yeah. so these great monuments of bruno bonia that which are among the largest in europe were built in an age before metal Correct. so all stone tools anything Correct. that you're using as a tool yeah. is either made of stone Correct. or it's made of wood or it's made of bone Correct. You're digging the earth with antler yes. picks and cow scapula shovels. Yeah, shoulder blades as well. It must have appeared yeah. to be yeah. a work of magic. Revolutionary. To magic. make, first of all, molten yeah. metal from Correct. stuff taken Correct. out of the earth. Correct. And then to form that into something that hardened. Yes. It must have been. It's no wonder yeah. that the smith is held in such high Correct. esteem yes. in mythology. Yes. Along with, for instance, the bard, uh, the poet along with the physician Correct. you know yes because they were kind of working magic in a way There's weren't no they about it. and stand at the national museum and look through the glass and look at the tower brooch and go imagine Amazing from a very of early primitive design to the very basic materials to make the bloom look how they navigated their way through the technologies at the time to discover the silvers or the bronzes and all that to make that work of art mm. with again primitive ways of doing it but they did it Mm. It's, it's, it's curious because they didn't immediately in Ireland anyway I can't speak for Europe because I'm not familiar with Bronze Age Europe um, apparently they didn't immediately sort of take to bronze in a way that was completely encapsulating I've heard, I've read that there is a distinction between the early Bronze Age and the late Bronze Age so the Bronze Age in Ireland folks starts around 2500 BC and ends circa seven to 500 BC. It lasts approximately 2,000 years. In the early Bronze Age, which is the first half of that, okay. people used bronze. Okay. In the second half, and this is the distinguishing thing between the two parts of the Bronze Age, okay. in the second half, they came to depend on it. Okay. In the first half, they used it, but weren't dependent upon okay. it. In the second half, they were dependent right. upon it. Okay. Is is bronze a difficult metal it to is, work with? It is. It's challenging. It's like brass. It has its own personality. I can't do what I can do with the mild steel with brass and with bronze. It's a completely different process. I mean, I had a I had a, a go with the with a brass pendant a couple of months ago, and with my impatience at the forge, having a piece of brass in the fire, taking it out, I popped it into a, the vessel, the cauldron, to cool it. Of and water. Yes. Yeah. And you could hear the pain of this piece of brass scream because you don't do that. You were supposed to give it a bit of time. You have you? to let it sit on a brick and let it air cool. Okay. For and how long? Well, well until it depends. Yeah, until it becomes, piece. until you can handle it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because, oh, right. Yeah, because I popped it in straight away, I fractured. And Lexi uh, was so. Yeah, Lexi you know, Erickson Lexi pointed that out. It. Yeah. Well done, Lexi. Yeah, she's and at she, the. Uh, yeah. And she was, so good. Some. she was so good to come at a comment and a lovely positive critique. And I so welcomed it. But I hadn't the patience because I was so used to working my mild steel that I can work it in the forge. I can use the vessel or the cauldron to take that temperature down so I can handle it or do whatever I need. You can't do that with brass. Yeah. And, and, I, and you know, when I have looking at time, I can't look at a piece of brass and saying, right, I'm looking at it cool. No, so I just dipped it in the water. Mm. But I knew there was good consequence in that. And when it cooled with the water, then I could look and I seen all the stress fractures within it. Now I have it sitting on a, on a, on a pin on, at the forge and it's, getting this beautiful patina because it's just in a it's in the atmosphere it's sitting there yeah and i'm very happy with it it might give give the thing character but that's it's like where we, where we discussed with the saint bridget's cross i'm with the brass work in a development where i know what i can do but it's all experimental yeah and you're all the time experimenting in the background while you're doing your bread and butter product as well you know what i mean tell me something this is and this is an interesting question because i genuinely don't know the answer but if we were to hop into a time machine right now yeah. and were to arrive at the beginning of the Bronze Age in Ireland yeah. and, you know, you still had your skills, you were the same person. Correct. And somebody said to you, yeah. Tom, I need you to make something out of bronze. OK. You can't just send an email or no. ring up the supplier and say, drop me off a supplier of bronze, will yes. you? Yeah. You have to mine it. Of course you do, yeah. Yeah. Is that anything? Is that something you know anything about? Very little. Yeah. Because I can ring my supplier and I can have stuff mm. shipped in the same day, and all of a sudden I've got bronze in the post or it's been delivered, and I'm happy to work on that. But certainly, regarding the elements to make up that material, it's a completely. Is different. bronze a single material? Mm. Like brass is copper and tin, is it? I can't remember oh. now the elements to make up the bronze, but it's yeah. an additional to a brass. Yeah. There's another element or two involved, and again, high temperature, it's poured mm. out, it solidifies. There you got that. But it's got a very similar character to brass. So when you take into account yeah. that in prehistory, Correct. 
the bronze smiths yes had to source the material Correct. as well as Correct and right. as work with it yes it makes it all the more extraordinary without a it? doubt without you know? a doubt yes because they were so they were so keen to develop their, their, their spirit of adventure with primitive setup but yet they look what they're able to harness from the ground mm. you know to 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 establish the correct measures to establish the correct temperatures yeah, to yeah. establish the right time durations and then to crack a, a vessel where it was fired for days and all of a sudden out poured this molten bronze and it solidifies and yeah. they've got this billet and they're ready to take that and do what they need to do with it then. yes and then they create something like a blade Correct. or a piece of jewelry yes and it shines Correct. and it looks and then yes. people are going wow yes. what is this Correct. you know you can see how yes you know the development of metal doubt doubt. sort of in tandem with the development of civilization Correct. and i always i wrote i said in my new grange book which was published 2012 i said that that's really when we began fighting because yeah. We were making jewellery, correct, which is yeah. the sort of stuff that when people wear, it gives them some esteem or yeah. prestige. Yes, and we also were making weapons, correct. You know, think of it in the context of defending. Can you just imagine the scene at the Hill of Tara with the high thrones occupied with the kings and the queens? But yet it was a territory that was always under threat. Mm. There may have been yes. the invasions. All of a sudden, a whole big fuss. Oh the yeah, yeah. Night because of an army spilling over a hedgerow to come to ready to loot and just. You know, plimage and take take over. Yeah. And they had to be ready at a moment's notice, and then to travel to be able to, to travel to the great the great battles. Then you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great, and that's that's my stimulus. That's my inspiration. And you know, it's a lovely thing to stand here in the Boyne Valley, the heart of the Boyne Valley, and be within minutes of the great monuments, and yet the world looks in at what we're doing. Yeah, and we're you know, it's almost like an ambassadorial role, which it's is a, such a privilege. It is a great, it's great a privilege. privilege. Uh, Arc Astronomy Database tells us that brass is copper and zinc. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that is probably a bit more complex, you know. Yes. In the right percentages mixed, of course, yes, Correct. indeed. Um, copper and tin, Monica is saying. Uh, they could probably get copper from Cyprus, from Ph Phoenician merchants, right. tin from next door in Britain. Wow. And of course, don't forget there were big um, um, gold mines in Ireland in some of the mountain ranges. Um, there's a lot of gold exported from Ireland, as well as in the Stone Age, the uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, J not jadeite. What's that stone called? Porcelainite. Porcelain. The axes that are the axe, this that material from which axes are found, uh, that is only found in the north north northeast of the island and on Rathlin Island. Uh, Joe keeps says I heard someone seen a Bronze Age type of armored dressed man in Strokestown walking down a country lane carrying a large stone in his arms. Was he going to the participate <laughs> in the local pantomime, perhaps? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, just catching up on the comments. Brendan Byrne, no spit in Tom's Forge, only his awesome frying pan with <laughs> handmade handle in the, the form of a spiral. Frying pan, the Brendan. mythical That's frying pan. Blessing. <laughs> uh, who else? Michelle Woodburn. I love the energy increase in Tom starts talking about the forge <laughs> and the metal. He's unstoppable. The man barely sleeps at night. I'm serious. He gets about three or four. He's like Margaret Thatcher. I'm going to say it to the Very end. bad comparison. <laughs> He's not like Mar Margaret Thatcher. The, the Iron, Iron Lady. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The Iron Man. The Iron Lady. Uh, yeah, yeah. Robert Downey Jr., the Iron Man. Yes, 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 indeed. Um, you should see the things Neil Burridge does with bronze oh, swords, etc. Yeah, I yeah. Must, must make a note of that. Yeah, Neil because Burridge. That's a learning, and, and again, the wonderful thing with the forge, every day is a learning day, no matter what ability. Experience brings confidence. When you do something once, that's yeah. fine. Let's look at it. Do it twenty times. Now look at the one you've done the once. Gee, there's a, there's a world difference. Why? Because you put the time in. You put the effort in. And now when I start navigating my way into the bronze work, you, you look with these inspirational people and these inspirational artists and you just go, wow. Can, you, can I ask you a question? And I'm saying hello to Pat Maddox, who I think is a first time viewer. His family hello, was Pat. from near Cork, left during the potato famine. Uh, you're very welcome to the live stream, Pat. Can I ask you, do you have all the prototypes for the Bridget's Cross? No, uh, they're in pieces. Yeah, yeah it's beach. something you could do a post about on Instagram yeah. or whatever. Correct. It'd be very yeah. interesting, That's you know, a um, yeah. Yeah. just to show yeah. and to talk just very briefly yeah. about the process that suggestion. led you from having this idea, yeah. Imbus for a snake, yeah. you know, <laughs> to actually creating Correct. what we yeah, could call I, I, I the do, finished product, I, you know, I the finished the item. Cross and my words of, uh, my exact words when I finished it, 
were horrific. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Didn't deal with it at all. No, just no. But it, this is the wonderful thing about yeah. You know, a, a person of another disposition see, see, might just yeah. go, "Ah, oh, feck it, see, I can't do this," yeah, and yeah. throw it down and see, walk away from it. See, the steel it's, is the medium, and steel doesn't behave the same way as uh, as, as the rush when you cut it. You don't have that flexibility. Yes. But I tried to work that in the same context as a reed or the rush. Yeah. Failed. But that's not a problem. You learn. Yeah. But I spent three hours on this thing. And I, I remember it coming with the legs intertwined with its neighbor and looking at this thing. And it was a glorified spider's web. It wasn't the same bridge's cross. Yeah. But that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. But your idea of what it should look like is different to that of the process. But the process proved it. That that's what it is in reality versus what you had as a dream or an idea. But the learning from that is then you bank that and say, no, 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 don't don't work with that because it doesn't work. So now you have to get back to the drawing board. Well, I think it's a testament to your skill and your dedication and, of course, the well, experience you have to look at from it like your this. career. Here's another good example. You're able to take the positives from that and say, yeah. right, how do we improve upon that? That's yeah. a failure, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's not a complete failure. It's a failure from which a well, phoenix can rise from the ashes, well, well, as at, it were. Yeah, look at like this, for example. If you go into a bicycle shop now, you're very capable of spending €5,000 on a brand new bicycle. If you hop up on that bicycle... I wouldn't, but anyway... And ride yeah. down the road, you're quite. it's quite possible that you'll fall off it. Correct. Does that make it that was a, a rise investment because you've haven't the experience on such an expensive bicycle? It doesn't. It just means you're you're not learned with it yet. You haven't given it the respect to you know to learn to ride it properly so that you can gain the confidence to get the best out of it because now you know you can do a certain speed or a certain time, but you've had to have a fall or two along the way. Now, if you had a fall or two along the way, what did you do when you fell? You picked yourself back up. Gave up cycling. <laughs> 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 yeah, pick yourself back up and you got back on the horse. Why do we fall down, Master Wayne? Anybody tell me what that's from? Why do we fall down, Master Wayne? So we can better learn to pick ourselves <laughs> up. I want to say a quick hello to Mickey Ansbury, who's on the Mythical Ireland community. He says, greetings, gentlemen, from the cold coast of Lake Erie. Hello, Mickey. A uh, very good afternoon to you. Um, absolutely. You're very welcome. Just making sure I'm not missing anybody or anything linda says i love the, these guys <laughs> hey we're available at the right rate we'll come around to your house and do we'll some we're, we're like we're like uh, what is it waldorf and statler the two old fellas from the muppet show <laughs> oh it was great it was well it was good well it wasn't that good oh, it was terrible boo <laughs> uh yes we are rogues yes michelle woodburn we are indeed we're batman yes marcus no it's a uh, thai arc astronomy database it gets it Master Wayne should have oh, given it away. Why do we fall down, Master Wayne? To better learn to pick ourselves yes, up. Yeah. Well, Tom, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think you fell down at all, but I think that you are certainly, <laughs> certainly on the up. And that star is blazing over the forge of the smooth road these days, well, like that Christmas star shining over the, the crib at Bethlehem. <laughs> it's like leading all eyes and all routes lead to the smooth road the yeah. Bohemian. You know, and it's lovely because only a mile and a half up the road is who's said to be the resting place? Nile of the Nine Hostages. I have to be careful there because I was thinking sausages. Couldn't say it. Nile of the Nine <laughs> Hostages is said to be buried 1.4 miles away from the forge at the crossroads of Greca, Bohemian. That is not an insignificant that detail, huge, folks. Yeah. I think that is huge, yeah. huge. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as a kid, I remember, and Stephen Ball, my friend, was online here, and Stephen will remember. When the Wallow Cup bicycle races would pass through the village, you know, we were all excited, to, you know, to make our ways to Greca. And, and that history is just metres away from where we crossed the white line, you know, finishing a bicycle race as kids growing up. That's brilliant. It's a lovely thing. It's a lovely story. Well, I I, I, I do think it's fascinating how Niall uh, found out that he was going to be uh, the king, which was embracing the hag and kissing the hag, uh, who his half-brothers would not kiss. Um, and... Uh, Scientists, genetic scientists now tell us that at least three million men in Ireland and in America and in other places wow. claim their descent from this single Irish high king. Incredible. So prolific was he. Yeah. Because the Kalyak, after she had transformed into a beautiful woman, young woman, after he kissed her, she told him that she was sovereignty and she was bestowing upon him the sovereignty of Ireland. She said, you're going to be the high king of Ireland and many of your descendants will be high kings after you. Of course, the rise of the Inales or the O'Neill kings. And of course, if you look at the prominence of O'Neill, just like O'Brien, uh, the sons of Brian Baru, uh, the O'Neill dynasty uh, lives on and on and on. And he's apparently buried close to Tom's Forge Correct. in Bohemian, which is fascinating. Yes, uh, Desiree wants to know if 
Do you all do birthday parties? Of course we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. It'll probably scare the kids away, but like you know, we give it our best shot. It's good for you know? children. They need to be scared now and then. <laughs> yeah, scare before bedtime. <laughs> Uh, maybe he did have nine sausages, says <laughs> Kathleen Geller. <laughs> yeah, I think we've been get, making a mistake all along. Uh, great crack. That's Mickey Ansbury again oh, on the Mickey. mythical learning community. Uh, I, I see a short book, Forge Philosophy. <laughs> yeah, that's the next. That's the next step. I'll have to write the book. Tom, Tom, Tom is is. Hang on, maybe I'm. Tom, can you write? Of course I can. Yes, you can sing. Can you sing? Well. So I'm after insulting the man. I was about to say I should write the book because I was perhaps suggesting that he couldn't write. Um, yes. So he'll write his own book and he'll take the pictures and explain the whole process. Kathy May says, oh, my gosh, this is getting hilarious. <laughs> uh, look, come here. We're Irish. And just in case there may be viewers who don't know this, but we Irish don't take ourselves too seriously. No. We like to have as we say in Irish, a bit of crack. That doesn't mean crack cocaine. That means fun. And it's oftentimes that fun is <laughs> at our own expense. By the way, I have a joke. I please, didn't tell you this. No, no, could we, please tell us now. An American woman arrives into a, an Irish pub. I have to get this right. And she says to all the men who are there, she goes, I have $500 to any man who can knock back 10 pints of Guinness one after the other. And she's waving the money around, looking at all the men. And all the men are staring back and they're kind of sort of retreating and just kind of looking awkwardly at the floor. Nobody will take her up on this. One man leaves the pub. And she's like, there's none of you man enough to, to take on the bet. $500 if you knock back 10 pints of Guinness. Not one of them. So she sits down and orders a gin and tonic. And she's sitting there drinking. And after a little while, the fellow who left the pub comes back in. And uh, he says, come here, I'll take you on. I'll take your bet. And she says, brilliant. She says, by the way, where did you go? He said, I went to the pub across the street just to see if I could do it. Kathy <laughs> <laughs> uh, May says, that's a good American accent. I don't, I, I don't know where about in the States that accent might be from. Very but good. anyway, uh, remember those sad times during COVID? The two of you getting together was a good thing that came. I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> The Muppet Show says Cy B. There you go, <laughs> You're yes. not wrong. Uh, two, two big, she has a southern accent. <laughs> not, uh, sorry, uh, Michelle says she's a southern accent, not from California. Where are we? Alabama, is it? Um, Illinois. Yeah. No, that's north. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. that's yes. Chicago. Okay. No, we're thinking. Make a part. Yeah, okay. for the south. Maybe yes. Texas, right, Elaine. Okay. I don't know whether that would pass as a Texas accent. <laughs> anyway, we must. Tom has to go back home. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to see you all night having the crack. get the whiskey shot, <laughs> I also I have... Tease, I don't no, have I, I also have some black... Um, um, some Bushmills. I think it's black label. <laughs> don't worry. We've lots of stuff. I even have... Actually, it's not belonging to me. It's belonging to one of my sons. He got a lovely gift of a liqueur that was brought home by a Polish friend. Oh, right. Okay. And it's a Polish version of the hazelnut liqueur. Oh, wow. I tell you that stuff's lovely. Right, okay. So myself and Tom are going to get locked in the other room. <laughs> and the next time you see us, we'll be sitting here going, oh, look at all them fuckers. <laughs> Joking, of course. Thank you very much to everybody for joining us tonight. It's 25 past nine. We've been on for almost an hour and a half. Good fun. Thank you very much to well, Tom. Thank you so for much, Anthony. Great sport. Good and again, wonderful congratulations. Oh, you're very good. And thanks so the much award. to all the two of you. have been so supportive. Yeah. I'm really grateful. Love you all. Thank none, you so much. None of this is remotely possible without all of you folks. Absolutely. I mean that you know, uh, entirely. Uh, careful what you dream of because they come true. There's no doubt about it. I just dream of that. Big, Honestly, uh, I can see it. I big see li it. big library with yeah. thousands of books and rooms, anti, anti chambers with yeah. lots of sections, you know, the archaeology section, the mythology section. Yeah. <laughs> and a bank of typewriters so that I can do my work. I know, typewriters. Anyway, go safely, everyone. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget to come back next week where I will almost certainly be talking about Bridget next week. I'm giving a talk in Clondalk and they're having a special Bridget's uh, Day event. Uh, lots of places around the country do 
uh, Google it and check it out on social media. There's tons of stuff going on uh, around the country to celebrate uh, Bridget. But we will undoubtedly uh, convene at 8 p.m. Irish time next Monday on the day of the official new public holiday to honour Bridget and we'll talk more about her. In the meantime, thank you all. All that remains for us to say is Ikawa, Kulasov, Slong Fole and Togaboge. Togaboge. Hey. Bye bye. Cheers.